Welcome to the Christmas Eve 2016 edition of Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch, Part 12, Making a New Steam Chest for the High Pressure Cylinder. The previous steam chest, which is the one on the right, was not really a serviceable item, so I got a casting from Blackgate's Engineering, which is not a Stuart casting, and I'm really sorry about that, but it is Christmas, and I wouldn't have been able to get a casting from Stuart's delivered on time. As I intend to do quite a lot of work on this engine in the Christmas holiday, I needed to get on with it. So this casting that I'm currently machining, and I'm using a face cutter for anyone who's interested. A face cutter is a large milling cutter with lots of teeth. All of the teeth on this cutter are replaceable carbide tipped type, but they do need replacing, they've been on here a long time. That's why, if you notice, I'm cutting using the inside edge of the teeth, not the outside edge. It makes a real racket when I go in with the outside edge because they're not terribly sharp. And when I stop the cutter to position the piece for the next cut, you can see the damage to the tips of the teeth. In this clip I'm using a soft mallet to make sure that the casting is firmly positioned where I want it to be. And off I go with a very light cut with the face cutter once again. And even though I've used a blunt carbide tip cutter on a very old Taiwanese milling machine, the piece is accurate. My micrometer confirms that it's the same thickness throughout. This steam chest casting is from a Clarkson steeple engine. When I bought it from Blackgates, they were telling me that this is an engine that they're going to shortly be supplying castings for. In this clip, I'm machining away the valve rod gland because it's the wrong size and it's the wrong shape altogether. From now on, I'm being very careful with this casting. I'm only taking light cuts. And you will also notice that I'm not using my drill chuck for holding the milling cutter. Generally speaking, on my milling machine, the cutters are held in a very old Jacob's chuck, which is very, very stiff and holds the cutters very well. Whenever I do any serious type of work where I don't want to damage the component, I wouldn't damage the component intentionally, but for instance, if the milling cutter worked loose in the drill chuck, it would not be good. So for this job where there's quite a lot of milling, I'm using my Clarkson collet type milling chuck. These very substantial chucks are designed for the job. Starting with the chuck itself, which has an R8 taper, so it's very well supported in the main spindle, and you put the milling cutter in a collet, and the collet locks into the unit. And in the previous clips I've just shown how I fit this smaller diameter milling cutter into the chuck. The reason for this is just to clean out the inside of the steam chest. Normally I wouldn't bother using a milling cutter to clean out the inside edge of a steam chest, I'd just use a file. But I have to do on this one because there was a piece of cast iron across about a third of the casting, which is obviously something to do with the design of the steeple engine. Anyway, back to it, I now have a steam chest, or at least part of a steam chest, so the first thing I'm going to do is drill some holes in it so it fits to the engine. And common logic says the steam chest cover fits perfectly on the studs, so use the steam chest cover to drill the holes. No. The original steam chest was a very tight fit on the studs, so what I did was, I filed out a couple of the holes to make sure that the steam chest fits perfectly on the studs. Then all I do is simply stick it to the new steam chest casting using some Loctite 638. And once the Loctite 638 is cured, the old steam chest will be securely fixed to the new steam chest casting. And the reason for not using the cover is I need to make sure that the hole in the centre of the new casting matches exactly the hole in the centre of the old steam chest. And this allows me to use the old steam chest casting as a drilling jig to make sure that all the holes in the new casting are in exactly the right place so that it fits on the studs. And don't forget, as I just mentioned, I did modify the original casting to make sure it fitted on the studs perfectly before using it as a drilling jig. A quick health and safety notice, I do not recommend holding pieces of metal in your hand when drilling them on a pillar drill. Normally I would put these in this machine cross vice. It's a very nasty thing is this cross vice, but it's saved me a lot of personal injury over the years. As a musician, a keyboard player to be exact, I do need to retain at least eight of my fingers. And does the casting now fit to the engine? Yes it does. In this clip I'm using the steam chest cover to mark out the steam chest, ready for another milling extravaganza. I'm removing the small milling cutter that I use for cleaning out the inside of the steam chest and I'm fitting a slightly larger diameter one. You can clearly see how it's done. The collet fits in a holder, the holder is threaded into the main body of the chuck and then you use a specially shaped spanner to tighten it up. 
what I normally do is whack the specially shaped spanner with a soft mallet, and this seems to work for me anyway. I could of course have fitted a much larger diameter milling cutter, but this is a very small part and it has holes in it, so you could say, well why did you drill the holes first? Because, if the holes had been in the wrong place, then this piece of metal would have been scrap. Plus I needed the holes in place in order to fit the part to the engine and mark out using the steam chest. After the milling operation, I fit the casting to the engine and fit the steam chest cover. And as you can see, the steam chest cover is anything but square. I will deal with that shortly, but first I'm going to machine the steam chest cover to the right size. This one is miles too thick. So I'm cutting it down to the same size as the one on the other side. Once the steam chest cover is the correct size, I clean it up to remove the tool marks. But to be perfectly honest, I use my linisher or horizontal belt sander first. After I finished the clean up operation, I bolted the whole thing together to see what it looked like. And it doesn't look very good. The steam chest cover is not square. And also the new steam chest casting is a tiny bit oversized on the left hand side. I snapped the old steam chest fully in half and I'm going to use this part to fit to the new steam chest casting. This is the part of the steam chest that supports the end of the valve spindle. So I'm going to machine the rest just leaving a boss to go into a hole in the new casting. But first of all I have to remove the new casting which is currently on the engine. Using a ruler I scribe a line on the midway point and then I turn it round and I scribe a line on the midway point of the thinnest part. And then it's over to the drilling machine, but before I fit the part in the machine vise, I give the machine vise a thorough clean. I want this to be quite accurate. Then I carefully fit the component into the machine vise, lining it up with the edge of the jaws. I do this because I'm not going to drill all the way through, that would be inaccurate. I need to drill one end, and then turn it over and drill the other end. And of course using a centre drill first. Then I machined away all of the original steam chest fitting in the picture on the right hand side, just leaving the domed part, which I then machined to fit snugly into the hole I'd previously drilled in the steam chest. Then I used some Loctite 638 to permanently fix these two parts together, after which I cleaned up the whole assembly. Then I do a test fit back onto the engine, and yes it looks okay, when this is painted, no one but you and I will ever know that it's not the original part. Time now to make the gland housing, so the first thing to do is to take a measurement of the original, and take a measurement of the gland nut, and take a measurement of the valve spindle's diameter. And then on the lathe, using a piece of close grain cast iron, I machined a new part to fit into the hole in the steam chest casting. I drilled a hole through the centre exactly the same diameter as the valve rod, I then drilled and reamed a hole to accommodate the valve gland, after which I fitted the part to the main casting using the usual Loctite 638. And then finally, using the gunmetal part of the gland as a drilling jig, I drilled down all the way into the main casting. And then using a 7BA tap, I carefully threaded the holes and fitted some 7BA studding. And with a big fanfare, ta-da, here's the finished part ready to fit to the engine. There should have been more video than I actually had for this section, but never mind, I can't be good at everything, and one day I'll even remember to press the record button. The next job is to time up the engine, and this is quite a straightforward job. I've described this in quite a few videos. If you really want to know about it, have a look at Model Engineering for Beginners, which shows it in detail. This I found to be a very fiddly job, and even if I'd have bought the correct casting from Stuart Models, it would still have been a fiddly job. This clip shows me fully assembling the engine. We have a steam inlet and a gasket between the steam chest cover and the steam chest and is it going to run I ask myself. And the answer to that question is yes it runs better than it did before. I've set the valve timing more accurately and it seems to run very well indeed even when I turn it round the other way. Have a good holiday and thanks for watching I hope you found it useful.